Like alkenes, alkynes will also undergo ozonolysis or oxidative cleavage in which the carbon-carbon triple bond is broken in half by an ozone molecule. Notice that the reagents are slightly different for the ozonolysis of an alkyne. With an alkene, our step two is dimethyl sulfide, DMS, or CH32S. But with an alkyne, we are reacting in step two with just simply water. However, the reaction is essentially the same. So again, we're splitting the molecule in half at the carbon-carbon triple bond. So I'm going to start by just drawing the molecule broken in half, and I'm still going to show those um, three empty bonds on each one of the carbon atoms. With a triple bond, because we have three spots that need to be filled, we are going to form one carbon-carbon double bond, carbon-oxygen double bond, like that, and we'll form one carbon-oxygen single bond. And um, over on our other molecule over here, we'll do the same thing. One carbon-oxygen double bond and one single bond. Now the step two with the water just serves to protonate those products. So we end up with these two products. I'm going to spread those out a little bit. And... When we have an R group, we're just simply making a carboxylic acid from the ozonolysis. For a terminal alkyne like this, we are making this very small formic acid molecule. And this molecule is extremely unstable. It actually undergoes immediate decomposition and it produces CO2 and some water. Now, typically we do not write out the water at all, and sometimes we don't even write out the CO2 that's formed. The CO2, I do want you to note, is only formed when we have a terminal alkyne. Because CO2 is a gas, it usually bubbles right out of the solution. So most of the time when we're doing this reaction, either on paper or on lab, we don't talk about or think about the CO2 product. Occasionally, you do need to show that it's being formed. You certainly need to know that it's being formed if you're doing this in the lab. But it definitely is not the goal of this reaction. So writing it out as a product is usually optional. Here are a couple of examples of ozonolysis. So this first one, we're working with a terminal alkyne. That means that we will be producing CO2. It's really important that you keep track of your carbon atoms in these reactions. So when we split this molecule in half and we're splitting it at the carbon-carbon triple bond, we're gonna end up with four carbons in one of our products. And that carbon number four is going to be the location of our carboxylic acid functional group. And then our other product from the terminal part of this is going to be CO2. And the carbon of CO2 is our carbon number five from this molecule. This is an internal alkyne. And when we do this reaction with an internal alkyne, we don't make any CO2 at all. I'm going to number this carbon chain. So when we split this molecule in half, we split uh, it so that one half gets carbons one and two, and carbon number two being part of the alkyne, carbon number two is a location of the carboxylic acid functional group. And then the other half of the molecule, carbons three, four, and five, three, four, and five, three, four, and five, that is our second product. Carbon 3, which was part of the alkyne, is also going to be part of a carboxylic acid. So when we do this with an internal alkyne, we make two carboxylic acid products. When we do this with a terminal alkyne, we make one carboxylic acid product and a CO2 byproduct.